In today's video, I will be addressing some questions from a viewer that allow me to illustrate my thinking and explain actually my thinking on uh, cassava sciences and also allow me to illustrate the goals that I intend to achieve with the channel Health Wealth. Concretely, my viewers asking me about my view on the phase two clinical trial data and how that may potentially indicate the chances of success with the phase three clinical trial of simufilum in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease patients. In this video, I'll also be addressing some more critical questions from a friend of this uh, viewer who is stating that uh, cassava, he thinks, is uh, perhaps already overvalued because the stock price is still up significantly from two years ago. And at large, he believes that the biotech or healthcare sector is notoriously difficult to invest in because of the uh, regulatory hurdles, requirements, and so on with the involvement of the FDA. So. If you'd like to see and hear my view on these topics, then stick around. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. So then let's get started with the tougher questions at the beginning of the video, just to get these out of the way first. So my viewer has shared with me the advice that he received from a friend of his about the uh, opportunity that may or may not present itself in investing in cassava sciences. The friend states that uh, drug developers are a lot like greenfield mining explorers. Even when everything looks quite promising, they are still extremely risky perhaps even more so because of the FDA involvement, which adds even more uncertainty. I would strongly recommend staying away. I am also extremely skeptical of a very fast 10x, given that despite massive dilution, it is still up 40x from two years ago. Obviously, there was a conversation that took place between two friends sharing advice on as matters as important as investing. And this is also a good segue to share with you really or to re-emphasize what my goal is with the Health Wealth channel. I applaud any investor who knows exactly why they invest or why they are not investing in a particular asset. My goal is not to change anyone's mind, but to inform investors so that with the added information, each can review and if needed, adjust their investment thesis. Every investor views risks differently and each investor is, of course, as unique as we all are as individual human beings. Making investment choices boils down to having enough information to evaluate and judge the risk and reward as they apply to our own unique situations. And this is why, if you pay close attention to the intro of every video I make, I try to make it very clear that I do not give investment advice. I'm only sharing my personal opinion and information and also professional experience to help you make better informed investment decisions. And of course, past experience plays a big role, but only those whose past experience prevents them from continuing to learn, to being curious, evaluating past investment decisions and remain stuck, do not grow as investors. Pharma is not necessarily more risky the road to reward and success is just way longer than in most other industries. Heavy regulation can be thought of as barriers, but they actually level the playing field and are there to ensure our healthcare products, such as medical devices and drugs, are safe. It is a different level of impact if a new car needs to be recalled, for instance, for a faulty ignition switch, instead of endangering patients' lives due to unsafe drugs. So, the FDA is often seen as the hurdle and the enemy, but they are actually a part of the process and those who understand what the FDA need to approve a new drug can better judge the investment risks for treatments that which are still in the clinical trial phase. This is one of the many ways my channel Health Wealth aims to educate investors. I have already several videos entitled Health Wealth Investor Toolkits, for example, and these aim at explaining fundamental information about the FDA regulations and treatments and the approval process that medical devices as well as uh, drugs actually have to go through in order to make it to market. Of course, greenfield mining explorers must be heavily optimistic about finding the resources buried deep in the ground when they come to prospect for those. 
Likewise, any medical device company, pharmaceutical company, or biotech equally have to be very optimistic about the uh, clinical trial outcomes uh, which they are going through. And actually, there's a lot of preclinical work and checks and balances in place to ensure the success of a clinical trial actually is being increased because, of course, these uh, clinical trials are quite expensive to carry out. So nobody in their right mind would uh, really aim to start a clinical trial if they weren't reasonably certain that at least there is promise that the clinical trial phases 1, 2, and 3 actually would be successful. Of course, we all must be aware and accept the fact that not every product makes it successful through the clinical trial phases. At each stage of clinical research, phases 1, 2, and 3, a drug or device can actually fail to meet the primary and or secondary endpoints and therefore would not be able to uh, actually be commercially approved and be brought to market. So just in case that you do not have access to a wiser investment friend willing to share their experience with you, or you still would like to have basically another opinion, well, I hope that you find it useful to uh, review the information that I'm sharing with you on my channel. Now, let's quickly look at the uh, claim that the cassava stock price is actually up about 40x from two years ago. So we look here at the stock chart and we see that at the beginning of 2020, uh, the stock price, yes, indeed, actually <clears throat> went up quite significantly. So um, we were here at roughly three dollars. Uh, and of course, we are now at uh, shy of fifty dollars. So it is undeniable that, of course, in the span of two years, the stock price has gone up quite significantly. And that, of course, yes, is a fair argument. However, at the same time, we have to keep in mind as well that in those past two years, many things have actually happened. And I would argue that many of the things that have happened actually reduce the risk and a reduction of risk ultimately rewards a higher stock price. So let's review this in more detail. So when we go back actually to the list for all the studies that are listed on clinicaltrials.gov for cassava sciences, we see, in fact, really that there are seven studies listed, which are the ones that I have just shown you. And we see that many studies have been actually completed. Those are the phase one and two studies. There's one part of the um, phase two study, of course, that's, uh, well, still active. And we have then the recruiting going on for the phase three clinical studies. In light of this, so none of that information was available two years ago, so there is plenty of justification why the stock price should be much higher at this point because phases one and two have actually been completed quite successfully. Of course, some investors may question the validity of the clinical trial data in light of all the fuss and uh, short seller arguments, such as we have discussed plenty on my channel, for instance, quintessential capital management report, or then the citizen petition, which was filed actually in the summer of 2021. And of course, as we have discussed in yesterday's video, which was breaking news on February 10th, the FDA have rejected all of the filed citizen petitions from the law firm Labaton and Sucro against Cassava Sciences. So that is the reply letter from the FDA, and it is quite beautiful to read and to look at. So then let's address the second part of the question that my viewer is asking me about the comments that his uh, investor friend had made to him. He says, pharmaceuticals is an exceptionally tough sector to trade, both for bulls and bears. He is citing two different trades that are two trades that he made uh, recently and their shares got completely smoked right when things were looking quite positive. I can give you multiple examples of companies that somehow make it all the way to phase three clinical trials and tell shareholders how successful the drug development is going only to be shut down by the FDA finding errors in the statistical analysis of results or testing methods during the senior reviews. These statements are certainly correct and really require the potential investor into the biotech sector, pharmaceuticals uh, alike, to really do their due diligence and their homework. And of course, there is always a remaining element of, well, potentially luck involved as well. As investors, we have to realize that 
at any phase going through the development uh, and clinical trial phases, a result from clinical trials may actually be the roadblock and the stop to the development when primary or secondary endpoints aren't met. Now here the advice my viewer received was also partially perhaps criticism on the involvement of the FDA or the fact that the FDA can shut down the uh, development process when they find errors and mistakes that have been made during the uh, reviews that certainly the FDA are doing when they are reviewing, let's say, a new drug uh, application and the results from the clinical trials. So once we accept that there is no way to market without the FDA or in other jurisdictions, Europe, for instance, EMA, which plays a similar role in ultimately being, let's call it the referee. Um, in most sports, you need a referee as well to basically somebody who ensures and who checks that all the rules uh, of the game have been followed appropriately. The FDA or EMA do that very same function and in that sense level the playing field, which means all drug developers, biotech, medical device developers, all have to abide by the same common and sensical rules ultimately to ensure that once these products go through the approval cycle of the FDA, we as consumers can expect efficacious and safe medicines or medical devices. If possible, of course, it also helps to look how much experience the management team and the clinicals team have in running clinical studies. Of course, no investor would want the FDA to be the one pointing out that there have been flaws in the data analysis that could have been picked up or perhaps even clinical protocols not developed with the uh, view in mind that sufficient data and the right kind of data must in the end be presented to the FDA. If there is some clinical data missing, of course, neither FDA nor EMA would be in a position to say, well, we can approve the drug. These agencies need all of the relevant information to evaluate the safety, the performance and the efficacy of drugs and the clinical teams and ultimately, of course, the companies, the sponsor of clinical trials need to be able to provide those and set up the clinical trial protocols accordingly. And despite all the controversy that the short sellers have stirred up on cassava sciences, it fills me personally with lots of confidence to know that the FDA have already given the green light for the special protocol assessment related to the phase three clinical trial program or plans cassava have discussed with the agency. So let me now address the final question of my viewer. He is asking, based on the phase two data of Simufulam, what percentage conviction do I have that the drug is going to be a money maker? In order to answer this question, let's take a look at the clinical program and what activities on Simufulam Cassava Sciences have already completed. We see here 2017 phase one dose escalating safety study has been conducted and the safety profile was very safe. Then 2019, a phase 2a open label study in Alzheimer's patients. Then in 2020, they did the phase 2b randomized placebo control study. And then they had provided the interim analysis of the open label study for the first 50 patients who completed 6, 9 and 12 months of treatment. And then they had the end of phase two meeting with the FDA, which then ultimately led to the discussion and the FDA agreeing to the special protocol assessment for the phase three study. And the FDA certainly wouldn't have done that if the data from the phase one and two studies wouldn't look uh, sufficiently well positive in order to actually support going into a phase three clinical study. So we see here the way the phase 2b study was actually uh, designed we have patients who basically either get 50 milligram uh, of simufalam oral twice daily or 100 milligram and of course we have the matching placebo arms again with ultimately the two doses so there is the baseline cognition test as well as the uh, biomarker at baseline so that is before treatment and then 20 days after the treatment again biomarkers as well as the uh, cognition tests. 
So personally, what is very important in my opinion is of course always the safety profile. So this is also by no surprise that this is listed as one of the first uh, criteria or information here. Also no serious adverse events. That is absolutely great and I would say a must have indeed. So. Um, then we go on and can take a look at the uh, biomarkers and we can see that the different biomarkers that uh, are being looked at and that are well linked or indicative of the deterioration that takes place in the brain of uh, Alzheimer's patients clearly do correlate with the dose and well in case of placebo really with no significant changes so we see here a very dose dependent change in the biomarkers um, based on the dose of simuflam that was taken again biomarker uh, information well is very hard to well, alter by the patient so in other words it is more unlikely, in my opinion, that biomarker data would be subject to uh, the influence of placebo, um, unlike perhaps than the cognitive data, which yeah may perhaps be a little bit more amenable to uh, being influenced by placebo. Although, of course, here this was a double-blind study. Again, patients wouldn't really uh, know, neither the uh, investigators. So then looking at the open label study data, again, biomarkers, and this is uh, at six months based on 25 participants uh, for which the data was already analyzed. We see clearly a massive change in the biomarkers that have been selected. So again, a clear response to the medication in terms of the biomarkers. If we then look at the cognition, again, here, open label study, we know that uh, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disease, which means that cognition is a one-way street, basically going down towards decline. Um, and in that sense, it would have been really already an improvement if there was no decline. In other words, if the cognitive scoring would have basically remained on the zero. But uh, seeing an improvement in the uh, cognition scores is really absolutely fantastic. So, of course, there has been lots of criticism by the short sellers about how these data well, are presented and if there was patient selection and so on. Well, I'm not going into this now, especially also since the FDA have uh, rejected the uh, citizen petition. But if we believe that this is true, genuine data, well, then that is absolutely massive for any Alzheimer's patients and their caregivers. So since we see a progression over time up to 12 months, of course, I would want to see data going out much further because we want long-term efficacy and effect. But we have a clear indication here that simuflam continues to, uh, to have an impact and to work. Uh, improving the Alzheimer's conditions. So based on all of that data, I am very confident that we will see similar repetition of uh, the results that have been shown here in the phase two study, also in a much larger patient population that will be enrolled in the phase three clinical trial. I sincerely hope that I was able to answer my viewers and his friends question and I hope maybe I have gained another subscriber or two. All right, that said, I summarize, I really would like viewers of the Health Wealth channel to be able to know exactly why they invest in certain assets and why they don't. In other words, if you can explain to your own friend why you invest, and you may have gained that information from my channel, then my mission is accomplished. I want to make you a better investor and if this helps you, please consider liking my channel or liking the video and subscribing to my channel.